From towering rock formations to intricate caves and stunning geological features, these structures showcase the planet's remarkable diversity and beauty. Join me for today's video. We're going to unveil the top 15 most striking natural structures in the world, beginning with number 15, the Crowley Lake Columns. While ancient Greek and Rome may be the kings of column building, the naturally occurring Crowley Lake columns give them a run for their money. About 760,000 years ago, California's Long Valley Caldera was formed, creating large rock formations that eroded over time thanks to wind and water. At Crowley Lake, this erosion created a series of white columns that look like the entry to some strange natural temple. Number 14. The Devil's Tower if you travel out to the rural U.S. state of Wyoming, you can visit one of the most stunning natural towers out there. It was designated as the United States' first national monument by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1906. The rock comes in at a height of 265 meters, and it was formed by the same forces that helped shape the Rocky Mountains about 65 million years ago. It now stands as a stark lump of rock in an otherwise flat landscape, and it welcomes about 400,000 people a year and 4,000 yearly climbers attempting to get to the top. Number 13. The Hole at Rodear A hole in the wall in the most literal sense. The Hole at Rodear is a hole on the side of one of Spain's Sierra de Guara mountains. Formed by the forces of erosion, this site is quite popular with climbers, who flock in the hundreds to this remote place each year to get their adrenaline fix. And while you may be tempted to join them, keep in mind that this climb isn't for the faint of heart. Number 12. The Enchanted City of Tamajon While the Enchanted City of Tamajon might look like something out of a fairy tale, it is, in fact, a rock formation made entirely by natural forces. Despite never being inhabited by humans, erosion from wind, rain, and ice has made these karst rocks develop arches and passageways that make the site look like a whimsical city. In some spots, the erosion has been so pronounced that natural sculptures have even been formed. And all in all, these features have earned the enchanted city of Tamajon a spot on Spain's national inventory of outstanding landscapes. Number 11. The Rishat Structure Located in the middle of the Western Sahara Desert, this 40-kilometer-wide structure resides in the country of Mauritania, and it's better known as the Blue Eye of the Sahara. Resembling an enormous bullseye, it was known amongst local nomadic tribes for centuries, but it was only in the 1960s that the Western world discovered it, after the Gemini astronauts spotted it and began using it as a landmark. While first believed to be an impact crater, studies of the rock have shown that the structure's origins are likely based here on Earth, and it's so old that it contains rocks that predate the existence of life on our planet. Number 10. The Zimbabwean Dollar Rocks if you're somewhat into either meme culture or economics, two different things entirely, then you may know a bit about Zimbabwe's currency. After all, in the mid-2000s, their sky-high inflation made them an infamous example of the dangers of a poorly run economy, while their almost comical $100 trillion notes took the internet by storm. Now, while most people remember the ridiculous denominations above all things, each and every one of those special notes had a certain rock structure at the front, and that structure were the so-called balancing rocks. Chosen as a conjoined metaphor for development and environmental protection following the country's independence from Rhodesia, the rocks hail from Matapost National Park, which is a rather sleepy protected area in the suburb of Epworth. One of several rock formations in the area, the balancing rocks, are the way they are thanks to natural forces and have not been moved in any way by human hands. This makes them a rather impressive example of how nature can make seemingly impossible structures come about. Now, if you'd like to see these rocks for yourself, you can either walk or drive around Matos National Park with ease. Alternatively, if you rather just look at the rocks, you'll need to look to eBay. After all, Zimbabwe has stopped printing its iconic multi-trillion dollar notes, and in order to get your hands on one, you'll have to buy it secondhand. However, in recent years, the rocks have made a comeback, as Zimbabwe has created a new bond note that's pegged to the US dollar. Therefore, if you're not scared of putting some of your hard-earned cash into Zimbabwe's currency, you can have some of these bills for yourself. Number 9. Fairy Chimneys while these fairy chimneys may look like the creation of a magical little creature, they're entirely naturally happening phenomenon. Located in Turkey's Cappadocia region, they trace their origins back to volcanic eruptions that happened millions of years ago. You see, these eruptions left behind layers of solid yet soft material known as tuff and a harder material known as basalt. 
Over the years, the forces of erosion wore away at these layers, and since tuff isn't so tough, it quite easily eroded into the caves we see in the area today. It didn't take long for humans to catch wind of these caves, and thus over the centuries they've seen a variety of different uses. Most notably, due to the tuff inside the fairy chimneys being easy to excavate, early Christians often found refuge in them, as they would place their homes and churches inside these natural structures in order to hide during the persecutions by the Roman authorities. Even after the Roman Empire legalized Christianity, the fairy chimneys continued to be used as a place to shelter from invading Persian, Greek, and Turkish armies at various points in history. Sometimes, humans would take things to the next level by greatly expanding upon these caves, and in some places, such as Kemakli and Derinkuyu, became massive underground cities that could and would shelter thousands. Today, the fairy chimneys are considered to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and over the years, this distinction has helped make that area rocket upwards in popularity. In fact, in 2022 alone, about 4 million people visited the caves, marking a massive year-over-year -year increase. Now that there are no more pandemic restrictions, these numbers are probably going to increase, so I suggest visiting ASAP before the area becomes completely overrun with tourists. Number 8. The Devil's Slide the state of Utah is known to be very religious, and so it makes sense that one of its grandest natural structures is wrapped in religious lore. It's located in the north of the state near the border with Wyoming. The Devil's Slide consists of two parallel limestone rock walls that protrude from an otherwise flat mountain face, making the thing look like, well, a massive slide. Given that the rock walls protrude 40 meters out of the mountain face, they look very out of place. However, it turns out that there's a perfectly sound explanation for their existence. You see, about 75 million years ago, a large geologic event occurred in the United States. Now, this event caused the folding and faulting of rocks and created large mountain ranges such as the Rocky Mountains and, by chance, a large limestone protrusion in Utah. However, over time, erosion caused the protrusion to split into two separate walls, creating the slide we see today. This slide was then discovered by Utah's settlers in the 1840s, named the Devil's Slide somewhere before 1875, and it's been a tourist site ever since. However, for many residents of Utah, a scientific explanation is not adequate. Instead, they believe that the slide has supernatural origins that harken back to Christian traditions. Local legend states that when God threw Lucifer out of heaven, he passed through Earth and slid down the mountainside along the route of the Devil's Slide before arriving in Hell. Another legend states that a Christian missionary by the name of Father Pietro del Toro was traveling through the area when he encountered the devil. Disguised as a fellow Spaniard, he reportedly tried to tempt del Toro by offering him food, spirits, wealth, and other fine material things. However, every time del Toro resisted. When the devil then threatened to kill him, del Toro held up a crucifix and prayed. This weakened the devil and caused him to fall down the side of the mountain, thus forming the devil's slide. Moving on to number 7, the Living Root Bridges. Sometimes humans have to help nature along in the creation of cool structures, and this certainly is the case with the so-called Living Root Bridges. Often found in the northeastern state of Megalia, bridge builders there forego more modern materials by creating simple suspension bridges by linking together roots of the Ficus elastica, or rubber fig tree, through a process known as tree shaping. The way that tree shaping happens can vary wildly. After all, while some make use of tools such as wooden scaffolding or bamboo, others do the task completely by hand. However, no matter the method, the overarching goal is to have two or more trees' roots connect to create a bridge over a river or other natural obstacle. Now, the cool thing about these bridges is as long as the trees remain healthy, the bridge will naturally thicken and strengthen over time. In fact, so long as humans are continuously pruning them, new roots can continuously grow, making the bridge far sturdier than when it started. However, the unfortunate flip side is that when these bridges are abandoned, they can quickly grow wild, often making them far too unsafe to use, even if they look perfectly fine. With that being said, if well-maintained, these incredible natural structures can hold up to 50 people at once and last for several hundred years. And while there are plenty of high-quality living root bridges, there's one in particular that stands apart from the rest. Expanding out for a whopping 53 meters in length, the living root bridge is located in the town of Morkirnat and is considered to be the world's largest. It's made with the roots of two rubber trees planted on opposite sides of a river. It can only be reached after traversing a total of 1,500 steps. However, many people attest that the crossing is worth the hike. 
So in rural areas that only have foot traffic, there are few bridges that are as cool or as sustainable as the ones made by the route of the Ficus Elastica. Number 6. El Cenobio de Valoron While humans have tended to build man-made towns and cities, Cenobio de Valoron is building that goes against that trend. Located high above a canyon on the Spanish island of Gran Canaria, it was home for locals for hundreds if not thousands of years. It was first formed when a volcanic eruption created the rock that makes up the site. Now, this rock hardened over the millennia and today it's a network of some 200 to 300 caves spread out across eight levels. This network was useful because it allowed the locals to create a top-tier storehouse. After all, not only did the caves provide natural shelter and defense, but also a level of temperature and humidity that was perfect for storage. The goods in storage tended to be grain, and in order to make the storehouse as organized as possible, the Grand Canarians carved out passages, steps, and rectangular chambers completely by hand. In order to ensure that no looters would steal the grain, guards would be posted there day and night, and some of their remains have been found within the chambers. While historians are quite certain that Cenobio de Valoron stored grain, there is also a belief that it may have also stored soon-to-be wives. You see, when the Spanish conquered the island in the late 1400s, they noted that some of the larger chambers were supposedly used by the indigenous peoples as convent rooms. The idea here was that young noble women would live inside the caves alongside celibate priestesses, keeping their virginity intact until they were married. By all accounts, the Spanish totally bought into this theory. After all, the word cenobio means monastery in English. However, in more recent years, this belief has been put into question, with many historians believing that it was nothing more than a Grange storage spot. In any case, no matter which side of the story you believe, the Cenobio de Valoron is a Spanish cultural heritage site that's certainly worth visiting on a trip to Gran Canaria. Number 5. Spider Rock Rising nearly 230 meters above the ground, Spider Rock is one of America's most impressive geological structures. It's located in Arizona, and it seems to be a rather strange outcrop in the middle of an otherwise flat canyon. However, its existence can be explained by erosion. You see, long ago, spider rock was connected to the top of the canyon, and over the years, hill slope and stream erosion worked away at different parts of the ridge, eventually breaking it apart and leaving spider rock isolated. It remains there in the middle of the canyon today and is slowly eroding away. However, what really makes it interesting is its relation to the local indigenous people. You see, Canyon de Chile is completely owned and operated by the Navajo Nation. They've continuously lived in this area for thousands of years, and as you might expect, this extended stay has caused Spider Rock to enter into the local folklore. According to the Navajo, Spider Rock isn't just a rock, but a home to a deity known as Spider Woman. To the Navajo, Spider Woman was a source for good. After all, she is the one who gave Monster Slayer and Child Born of Water the ability to reach the Sun God, who then taught them how to destroy all the Earth's monsters so that the Navajo could live on the planet undisturbed. After doing so, the Navajo believed that she decided to make Spider Rock her home, as it was not only a beautiful spot, but also the perfect place to watch over and protect the Navajo people. And while Spider Woman would sometimes get angry, after all the Navajo would warn misbehaving children that Spider Woman might use her webs to take them inside Spider Rock and eat them. All in all, she's a very well-respected figure in the Navajo Nation. In any case, if you'd like to visit Spider Rock today, visitors are allowed to come into Navajo land so they can take a look. So once you've got the major landmarks like the Grand Canyon out of the way, Spider Rock makes for a second great Arizona day trip. Number 4. The Blue Grotto Italy's Amalfi Coast, it's easily one of the country's most stunning areas. It's filled with beautiful beaches and picturesque towns, and it's the perfect vacation spot. It's along this coast that you can find the island of Capri. While most famous for its great views and luxury villas, if you take a boat around the backside of the island, you can find a small hole that's been formed into the rock. It's this hole that leads to a natural structure that's known as the Blue Grotto. While it appears to be rather mundane from the outside, if the water is calm, you can take a boat right inside. It's named after the blue reflection of the seawater that illuminates the cavern. It not only has enchanting bright water, but also incredible acoustics, making this 25-meter wide, 60-meter long grotto a stunning place to visit. Beyond being just pretty, the Blue Grotto also has a long and storied history. First discovered during ancient Roman times, it served as the personal swimming hole of none other than Emperor Tiberius. In Tiberius's time, the grotto was decorated with several statues. 
However, when the grotto was rediscovered in 1826 by German poet Auguste Kopisch, the statues were gone. Nevertheless, word about it spread quickly, and soon Capri and the grotto became part of the Victoria-era grand tour that many noblemen and noble ladies embarked on. In later years, this increased attention created mounting pressure to research the grotto more thoroughly, and during this old time, some of those old sculptures were found at the bottom of its watery depths. In any case, if you'd like to visit yourself, your best bet is to go on one of the many guided tours that operate from Capri or the nearby mainland. However, if you'd like to take things a step further and actually go for a swim, you'll have to be a bit of a rule breaker. Officially swimming in the grotto is illegal, yet despite this rule, there are a fair amount of people who venture out after hours and swim around anyways. And while I'd highly suggest not sailing to or swimming in the area, when the sea is rough, the Blue Grotto is the perfect place to visit on a calm, sunny day. Number 3. Precariously Balanced Rocks Okay, of all the structures on this list, few seem to defy the laws of physics as much as precariously balanced rocks. Known as PBRs for short, several categories exist, however, most of the time they are large rocks balancing on top of smaller rocks. They are found worldwide, although there are some that are more notable than others. For instance, in Colorado Springs, there's a 290 million year old red sandstone boulder known as Balanced Rock. Naturally perched on a slope ledge, this 700-ton monstrosity looks like it's about to topple over. Another notable exception is Kumakivi, located in Finland. It's a 7-meter-long boulder that lies on a convex bedrock. Perhaps most fascinating of all, though, is the Goblin Valley State Park in Utah. There are thousands of PBRs known as hoodoos. They are mushroom-shaped rock pinnacles that are often several meters tall and are typically very oddly shaped. Now, not all PBRs are made equally. That's because many of the different types are complemented by the many different ways in which they're formed. For example, some were created thousands of years ago when retreating glaciers placed them where they are today. In other instances, it was erosion that turned them into what they are. Some are not PBRs in a strictly definition sense, as while some of these structures appear to be balanced, they may be connected internally by a slim spine of rock. Beyond being pretty and pretty cool, they are also important due to their scientific value. You see, their crazy positions mean that they'll inevitably fall at some point due to either erosion, changes in weight distribution, or an earthquake or other natural disaster. And as a result, the fact that one exists at all tells scientists that their location has not experienced a major disturbance event for as long as the rock formations existed. This can help these scientists determine other facts about the area's geography. However, one pervading issue with PBRs is that it's often not nature, but humans that are their ultimate demise. That's because there are some people out there that think pushing them over is entertaining, not realizing or caring that this has implications on a scientific research basis. And while jail sentences can be imposed if people are caught doing it, their location in rural areas makes enforcement difficult. As a result, people pushing over PBRs will likely continue to be a problem for years to come. Number 2. The Devil's Wall Known as the Devil's Wall in English, the Teufelsmauer has been the subject of curiosity and folklore for millennia. It's made of sandstone and reminiscent of a giant fence. It extends for about 19 kilometers across the Harz Vorland in central Germany. While originally formed thanks to the shifting of tectonic plates, over the centuries erosion has taken a number on the structure. As a result, the different areas of the wall can vary wildly in their density, making it an interesting yet far from homogeneous structure. Now, while the geology surrounding the wall is pretty clear, the Devil's Wall has far more than its fair share of folklore surrounding it. For example, one story collected by the Brothers Grimm explains that when God and the Devil were fighting over domination of the world, the Devil built a fence in an attempt to divide the Earth in two. However, he was unable to finish the wall in time and got none of the Earth at all. He then knocked down much of his wall in anger, and to this day, the Devil's Wall is the only part of the structure that still stands. There's also a variation of this legend that involves, of all things, a rooster. The story goes that, like in the last tale, God and the Devil were fighting for the possession of the Earth. They agreed that God would keep the fertile plains and the Devil the ore-bearing Harz Mountains, and only if the Devil completed the boundary wall by the time the first rooster crowed. While he built up the wall to the edge of the Harz, a woman passing by with a rooster ruined the devil's plan when her rooster crowed when the devil was just one rock away from completion. In response, the devil destroyed the wall in a rage, leaving the small segment that is still there today. Now, interestingly, some of the stories have nothing to do with God or the devil at all. In what can be seen as a more pagan story, once upon a time, a soldier was granted a tract of land in the area. 
He soon got to work clearing all the trees until there was just three left. At this point, he took a nap, but as he slept, he heard some little female figures speak to him from the branches of the trees. They were crying because they believed that they would lose their lives thanks to the soldier's tree cutting. However, the soldier, upon hearing this, promised them that no harm would come their way. Now, while he kept his word, in the later years, one of his descendants chopped off those branches, killing the mythical little ladies. This in turn caused all the soil to dry up and making the landscape dry and unfarmable. In any case, while all these stories are likely just fanciful tales, they provide an interesting glimpse in how significant the Devil's Wall was for the local people. Number 1. Cave Mansions now, generally speaking, caves are cold, dark, damp places that few people would want to live in. However, there are some people who have pumped considerable amounts of money into repurposing caves into super livable and often very luxurious homes. One example is this cave mansion in Mallorca. While people have lived inside this cave since the 14th century, in the years since then, it's had some massive improvements bought by the current owners back in 2006 and renovated extensively. After all the work was done, they had an impressive 9,000 square foot property on their hands. It's composed of five bedrooms. It's got cool features such as a game room, a top tier alfresco dining area that's right at the mouth of the cave, and you'll also find two swimming pools and a jacuzzi that's set inside an old stone mine, plus a fully functional vineyard with facilities necessary to produce your own wine. To top this off, there's even a top-tier garden that has plants broken up into 10 different zones and connected by the site's natural rock formations. It's thanks to all of its features and the incredible work done to the cave that the property is now listed for an astounding $4.1 million. This Majorca mansion isn't the only incredible cave structure out there. That's because if you fly across the ocean and land in Arkansas at the Ozarks, you can find a cave mansion that's arguably even cooler. Consisting of four bedrooms and four bathrooms spread across 6,000 square feet, it features include a state-of-the-art kitchen, wooden bar, large living room, and most impressive of all, an indoor waterfall sourced from an under-the-floor spring originating from the heart of the cave. To keep things warm, the cave uses a geothermal heating system, while above ground features such as a horse stable, spring-fed lake, and helicopter pad ensure that you got no shortage of things to do. Best of all, if you'd like to stay there, you can choose to either rent at a price of $2,200 plus tax per night or buy the thing outright for $2.75 million. So, as long as you got deep pockets, this would be an incredible cave, and it could be all yours. But there are some that choose to create their homes in caves that are not always the most natural. You see, in 1980, a man by the name of Grant Johnson bought 40 acres of land out in Moab, Utah. After holding on to it for some time, he ended up spending about eight winters simply blasting dynamite into a rock face in order to create 5,700 square feet of artificial cave. Once the space was blasted out, he created a water pipe that could funnel water from an uphill pond. This pipe both powers an electricity turbine and provides clean, fresh water, making the cave a livable space. After installing the utilities, Grant then outfitted his home with all the rooms that you'd find in a normal home, with special additions such as a music room also being present for those looking to engage in a jam session. I bet the acoustics are pretty nice in there. Best of all, he rents extra space to tenants on Airbnb for about 355 bucks a night, which when compared with many other luxury cave houses is quite affordable. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.